What's going on here? What's going on here? Oh, all right, got a set here, tower heist. Hey, what's happening, guys? What's up? Where's uh, Where's Eddie and Ben? They're not here. Oh shit! This is second unit. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. Damn! I wanted to get an autograph. Son of a gun. Let's go check the craft service table. So, this is crafty. Craft service. What we call craft service sometimes. Craft service, craft service. Very small, very minute. This is a you know small second unit, so we get this is what it is. So no Eddie Murphy, no Ben Stiller. But maybe we'll get to see them at the uh, sound stage sometime, maybe today, tomorrow, whenever. I hope so. Some crab service, look at cookies, nutty butter, cheese curls, <laughs> the whole nine yards. At least I have some food on my travels. I don't want to miss any of these big names. <laughs> Bye -bye, everybody. This is Radio Man here on the set of uh, uh, Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close with uh, Sandra Bullock and Tom Hanks. We're waiting for him to come out, so uh, maybe uh, he'll say a few words to you. Hey, Tom. When you're done, these people are doing a doc on me. What a, really? Yeah, you want to do How great that? is that? This is Radio Man. He's world famous. You were, you, we worked together in a terminal. He was actually That's in the right. movie with Terminal. And also, uh, well, we, you got mail. Right? That's right, yeah. This man's, a, this man's a cultural institution. You realize this, don't you? Cultural institution. You know, you know what? You get on a first name basis with the radio, you know you've made it. Every time I go to New York, the first thing I think of, and this is not bullshit, the first thing I think of is when am I going to see radio? It's great seeing him actually, because it's kind of like one of the fixtures of New York. It just keeps you real. As surreal as he is, it keeps you real. you have to know as a New Yorker. There's the Statue of Liberty, there's the Empire State well, Building, and there's Radio Man. He knows exactly what you're doing. He knows how long you're gonna be there. He knows what everybody else in town is doing. He looks like a Beckett character, you know, from Waiting for Goddard. I remember asking him, uh, you know, how he gets information on what we're shooting and things like that. It's it's fucking insane, actually, how he can be everywhere, knows everything, knows our schedule before I do. The hair's okay, been good? Yeah. Radio and I have been together for what? Oh, man, like I... 30, 30, 30 years, years at least. 30 years. Not as long as you and Jack are. <laughs> no, that's... I'm going to disappear and say right. what you want, okay? Okay. He's fabulous, and he's just the most loyal, loving movie guy that there is, and we love, we love radio.
We're having technical difficulties. Please stand by. Is Radio Man a character? Like a cartoon? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it a character? Is Radio Man a character? Well, I play Radio Man. I guess it's a character, yeah, in a way. But I am the real one. I am the real Radio Man, not really a character at all. I am what I am. It was on the film sets where I became Radio Man. I always wanted to be part of a, a, somewhere to be an actor, to be in the movies. In any capacity. I just love it. I just like the atmosphere. I like the people. I like what, what happens in the movie business. Plus you get free food, <laughs> craft service and catering, you know. Where can you get that anywhere else, you know? I mean, that's not the main reason, but, you know, it is a reason. Most people on the outside would not think that Radio Man is Radio Man. Some of them don't know who I am. They think I'm a bum. I'm sitting on the street waiting for somebody, maybe, you know, waiting for an actor to come by on a set. And all of a sudden, people walk by and go, you hungry? Would you like something to eat? Oh, you need some money? They think I'm homeless, for real, right? I'm not. I used to be, but I'm not anymore. My typical day is I get up out of bed, I get my bike and everything. I said, what am I going to do today? Where am I going to go? What, what movie set? I'm not sure. Where I do all my business, everything is basically the sidewalks and the streets of New York. I hang out on film sets and I want to get parts of the movies. Kind of like a hustle, you know? You hustle for roles just by being there. It takes hours and hours, sometimes days. I love being around the actors, I love the crew, I love the process, the creativity. Every day is a new experience, you don't know what you're going to see next. And in the afternoons, I go to Letterman. You wait around there for the actor to show up. After Letterman, I'll go to a premiere, then I'll go to the after party. Hi, Cher. How are you, darling? Dad, if there is a night shoot left, I'll go over there and hang out till morning, <laughs> until they wrap. Sometimes I'll just stay up the whole night, right through the morning and just jump on the next available movie set. Okay, what you got here is the dimmers and magic gadgets and all sorts of little uh, uh, colored filters that they use to put over the cameras for certain lighting, you know, they get blue and green and that's how they make the, the different shades they need for lighting. And here, got chairs here, right? Look at these chairs, huh? These are like uh, director's chairs that all the producers and whatnot sit around by uh, what they call the ca camera stuff, you know, uh, Video Village, that's what it is. Yes, yes, yes. What's up? And you are what? A prop guy? Grip Man. What's your name? Ben. Huh? Ben. ben. How long have you been around? Ben. Not as long as me, huh? How do you know me, then? From being around. That's it? Yeah. They, what, what do they call these things again? I know they're flat. They use these to put on the... Uh, what do they call these? Flags. Huh? Flags. Flags. Okay, some that's what they are. Big long things. They, they stick up right in there. Oh, yeah. Flags, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, I've been on a lot of sets, but I really don't know what half the stuff is about. <laughs> this is a craft service table here, and uh, it's where they make all, you put all the food together. What we call craft. I don't know what, where the name craft came from. I mean, is it a craft to make food? Or is craft foods, you know, with a K? And this is with a C. Anyway, ginger ale, my favorite. There's something about him that's very genuine, and there's something about him that's very adolescent. And I think the, the hybrid of those two, I identify with <laughs> completely. You know, he's like, he, he hasn't grown up yet. You know, and that's a, it's a nice quality, you know. That's why I say I like hanging around kids, because kids will fall down 
and you know, before they even get up, they'll find a little rock or something. I mean, like, you know, that's what Radio Man is. We're recording now. Hello, this is Radio Man here. I'm on location with uh, nobody at the moment. This is Radio Man here, live outside somewhere in Virginia in the hills. I don't know, it's greenery everywhere. Possums running around, madness. And uh, it's a show called John Adams for HBO. And I'm with a uh, gentleman here. His name is Paul Giamatti, who portrays? President John Adams. Can you tell us uh, uh, what this film is about? This is uncensored, right? Totally. So I can let down my front flap. So you should see that someone hit me with a piece of mozzarella before. Oh, did they? Can we get a shot of that? Should I hit you with it? <laughs> Feel free, sir. Feel free. Don't hit the face. That's okay, no, no. Uh, let's see. I don't remember exactly when I met uh, Radio Man the first time, but it was way in the early days and what I thought of him I mean he, you know I thought he was a fascinating character as he still is he was either uh, from another planet or some eccentric billionaire or maybe both George Clooney laughing away with his friends here I'm on the set here radio man in Washington DC and George Clooney on the set the big guy in the orange and black is uh, one of the Cone brothers as a senator over there and George Clooney taking photos with Bootlindy. I've been interviewed by Radio Man. Okay, Radio, go ahead. Yes, I'm a Radio Man here live in uh, Washington, D.C. with uh, the world's sexiest man in People magazine. And That's right. And, is that and correct? me too, I'm here as well. And you're here as well, yes. yes. So here we are, uh, that's the reflecting pond out there. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot, of, a lot of history that goes on here, you know. Mm -hmm. There's the Lincoln Memorial down there, you got back here. Right. And this is the set we're at right now. I'm going to focusing in on all these wonderful people. Important, yeah. important people, but get it down here. Who's this man? Oh, what, what a head on that. <laughs> Radio, now, are you actually going to uh, show this to people? Yes, in uh, <laughs> some of it, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> show it, yeah. I bring Radio onto the set. You know, I put him, uh, I gave him a, a small thing to do in Leatherhead, even. Put him in wardrobe and shit. I've been in about a hundred and some odd movies, I'd say. I think he has a longer resume than me in terms of uh, like movies in New York. Every movie that shoots in New York, uh, most of them, if he knows somebody, he gets a part in. Directors like Scorsese and Spielberg and Jonathan Demme, they see him and they insist that he has a part in their movie. I mean, you know, it's crazy. Did I make the cut <laughs> in Coney Island? Did they say that shot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, great. That's yeah. terrific. Okay, thank you. Goody. Bye. See you soon. Bye -bye. So yeah, every time I'm in one of their movies, it makes money. It's been successful, you know? Mr. D's made a ton of money. Even the Faith made a lot of money. Zoolander made a ton of money. Um, yeah. I don't know if it's only instrumental that I'm in it. I don't want to be an ego tripper or anything like that, but I think it has some sort of a balance, yes. That because I'm in their movies, it, it works. Yeah. Work. My son told the world in this guy. I have a nine-year-old daughter, look. I'm Larry. Pleasure to meet you, George. Thanks, Larry. I see a foot. All of a sudden, I'm going, ah! Look. I get splatted like a freaking little elf. I just seem to know instinctively what to do, basically. Action! And that uh, blows the director's mind, you know. I might on cue with stuff. I don't have to take that many takes to get it right. 15,000 people here. That's not noise. Are we going on? Acting is your lift. Makes you uh, feel alive. You can release yourself and, and do things you can't normally do, you know, in the streets, like you would in front of people and all. You can act out a part and be uh, do crazy things and get away with it. That's uh, what I like about acting a lot. But yeah, I would like bigger roles. Yes. Ah, uh, you know, like maybe a part here and there, <laughs> instead of just doing general background. I'd like to get some lines, you know and express myself how I am, you know, in front of a camera.
This is my mother's bedroom. If she, saw, if she was alive now, she'd freak it. Clean up the joint. Get up off your ass now. Uh, but, um, yeah. I do, I, I admit I do have a lot of stuff. I accumulated a lot of things. But to me, they're all sacred. You know, I keep everything. Radios, I get, it's not junk. Does it look like junk? I mean, this is all important things, right? What else we have here? Oh, I have a tape machine over here, a reel-to-reel -reel recorder, an old boombox. Hard to get, but I found it, and only $25, too. This was signed by Steven Spielberg, which I doubt even works anymore. The house is a shambles, but I like it this way. You know, this is how I live. This is my, my lair, my abode. Radio Man's House of Horrors. I was on the streets for a while. I was homeless for a while. When you're homeless, you like become invisible. People don't see you as a human being anymore. You're just homeless. It's like an abyss. You just can't seem to get out of it. It's uh, a very lonely, miserable, dismal way of living. I didn't want to be like all the rest and be paid and get a real job and do this and do that. That's why I really didn't like working for the post office, but I did it because it was money. I was a mail handler in the beginning. I was making some good money and I would go and just buy beer with it. Drinking was like a way to escape that kind of world. All that money ran out, and I just uh, had nothing left, so I wound up on the street with nothing. I used to sleep in the stations, down in Penn Station, below, or uh, ride the train, ride the F train, ride the E train, back and forth. That was okay, because it's a long ride. It takes like yeah, two hours to get from New York back to Coney Island and back, Coney Island and back. But every now and then you get a cop come over there and boom, boom, hit you with the nightstick. Come on, let's go, last stop. Got to get off. So what we did was we found a place underneath where they didn't know about, way below the tracks in Penn Station. And I met others like that. And they were happy to have me because I had the radio, you know, it's a, a conversation piece, basically, when you have nothing else, you know. It was stolen a couple of times. That's why I put the, uh, the thing around the neck. I try to steal it now, motherfucker, go ahead, you know, and then I, it's a hard, you know. I got tired of being homeless. I needed to be productive, doing something. Do I think the movie saved me from homelessness? Is that what the question was? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Jackals. These dogs. Come on, slowpoke. Yapping at the heels of their prey. The first set I came across was Bonfire of the Vanities. I had a beer in my hand when I ran into Bruce Willis at the time. And I was on that set. I offered him a beer because I thought he was a bum too. Because he had a, dis a disheveled raincoat on and looked like he had a bag with uh, whiskey in it. Okay. I thought it was real. And then he says, oh no, I'm an actor. Uh, this is a prop. I didn't know what the hell he meant by prop. I didn't know what that meant at the time. I was homeless. So I didn't know what he said. He goes, oh, prop what? I go, hey, hey, have a real beer. Here, go ahead, have a drink. We're rolling. Everything's quiet and good. Cut from way up top. You hear Radio Man. Bruce Willis, your acting looks like a fucking cartoon. It looked animated to me. It looked real, you know? And I had a few beers in me, so I didn't care, you know? I was just letting myself go. You know, everyone would just laugh and look up like, whoa, man. But as long as he wasn't doing it while we were rolling, the, the police would leave him alone. 
I wrote that right there. He said, oh yeah, I'll join you in a beer after, uh, after I'm done, no problem. Then he invited me on the set, and we started talking, and that's basically how I got into this crazy business. Come on. This one, man, radio, I was doing a film in New York uh, one fine day, and uh, this big thing was harassing me. And he'd yell with this sort of Lucky Charms accent, and he'd go, go oh, to be sure, oh, get over here, Clooney, you son of a bitch, you're no good fuck. And you'd be like, wow. And there's like, we're doing a movie with like little kids. You miserable movie whore, let me piss in your face. Are you gay? Hello, movie whores. You know, it's like, want some cock? Not today, thank you. Hello, how are you, radio? I'm well. Hello, you know? movie whore. <laughs> and it's weird, I was like, why does he talk in that accent? I don't know where he picked up. Hello, because it works, kind of, because he looks slightly like a damaged Irish drunk. I remember one time, radio man showing up, and he was fine in the morning, but something, he had started drinking or something, and by the time we wrapped, he was literally passed out on the sidewalk. And it was just, and it was sad, you know, to to to, uh, to to see this guy. I drank for a good number of years. I drank maybe for a, since I was like seventeen. Drinking gave me <clears throat> confidence and courage. I felt like Popeye and spinach and Superman. You know? Drinking, I could do almost anything. I was invincible. You know? Radio man will save you from the beast. Do not fear. You were acting man. like an idiot. People seen it. They didn't realize what you were saying half the time when you were drunk. You know, sometimes it was funny. Other times they were laughing in your face. So, but you didn't know that because you were drunk. They realized these people were really laughing at you, not with you. Hold it right there. I mean, you start seeing floating little fat people tell you that you're on a mission from God. <laughs> They'll slap you some heavy Thorazine. See this guy dressed up in rags and shit, screaming and yelling, Ew, Ew, I'm living your king, yeah. And it was Robin Williams. I was drinking beer at the time, and these cops are roaming around, they ask him, What are you doing here? They stopped him, and he started saying, Leave me alone, you know, I know. Mayor Cox, whoever the mayor was that time, he, and he did know them, he started yelling at all these actors. I know Al Pacino, I'm good friends, I'm radio man, and uh, I want to see the movie, you know, I'm working on a movie. No, you don't want to work, work, you're not working on a fucking movie, get the fuck out of here, or get, get lost. And then, so I said, go fuck yourself, I'm radio man, I know everybody, you know. Next thing I know, I turn around, my, my hands get clasped in the back of me, I get handcuffed, and let's take him to Bellevue, you know. And they take me to Bellevue Hospital. They thought that he was nuts, you know, for yelling these people's names out. And uh, they actually put him in Bellevue, strapped him to a bed, because they thought he was nuts. Bring me up to the observation room. Strap me in a chair. And um, keep me there for like a couple of months. They gave me Thorazine medication. They would say, take this in juice. In a little tiny cup and you put an orange juice or cranberry juice, something like that. And, and then I'd make sometimes believe I'm eating it and I did not throw it away. You know. <laughs> I couldn't function. They controlled you that way, you know, during that drug. They can push you, move you around, and you don't even realize it because you have drugged up. And I would still act like I was that way, but I wasn't. But it's kind of, kind of horrific. I find out later on that I'm not crazy, you know? I just need maybe a little cleaning up to do and maybe getting my head together. So, all right. I said, yeah, I'm not going to drink anymore, this and that. They let me go finally after that period of time. Sure enough, I gave it up, told Turkey. I went to a few meetings. I didn't see they one for me, you know, AA meetings or whatever. And I haven't, I haven't had a drink now for about 15 years. No beer, no nothing. We are outside the United Nations Plaza 
over here. And uh, that's where we're filming Finchley's Dreams, otherwise known as The Dictator, with Sasha Baron Cohen, who played that gay guy Bruno, and also was Barat, was it? Baroque? Please, please, you must listen to me. Please listen to me. I'm not what you think I am. You know, something like that, he says. You know. These, these are not my followers, they just happen to be protesters, but they don't understand the reasoning why they're here. I'm here to explain everything to you. Please, please, let me talk. Even when you're established, you still gotta hustle. If you don't put yourself out, you know, you're not gonna be noticed. It's a whole thing. I'm get, I get noticed because of this, because maybe this guy's crazy. You know, people see a guy with a big radio around his neck. Is he nuts? Is he this? Is he that? And they find out maybe that maybe he's intelligent. You know? uh, and he's got more to it than just uh, radio rants. These actors, they don't really have a crowd. You know? They're just background. They're just like there. Like matter. It's there too. <laughs> Do you get nervous when you're on camera, like on a film? No, no, I just, I'm natural with it, you know? I don't even look at it. I just let the camera roll and I just do my thing. Let's take a Now there, that, that's screaming. A bunch of people are told on camera to scream, yell, and make noise. That's not acting. It's just a certain concept they want to do. They want to hear all that noise, make it sound like it's a big crowd there. So I got ham, turkey, and like I said, mildew cheese, <laughs> rancid cheese, a cucumber, put over your eyes, use it as a monocle, you know. How do I say that? Here they go again. Ready to scream. You put a lot of thought into your background stuff, don't you? I do. I guess because I'm looking to upgrade myself and I want to get more principal work. So I try to incorporate stuff you know, into it. Improvise as it were. You're in the end of Born Supremacy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right right when the credits are rolling. Right right you're in the Born Ultimatum. Yes. Uh, did you do The Departed? Um, did you do yeah, the Departed? I did The Departed. Uh, well, not with you. We were in, uh, in Ashford. In, uh, in you the went house. for Leo. You went for the bigger I name. I went for the bigger name. Yeah, right over there. Throw me right under the bus. Go, 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 go! Fuck you! Who's having school? I'll take state police. Don't move! That's it. That was it. Yes, sir! Yes, sir! Yes, sir! Yeah, it was fun working with Marty on Shutter Island. He goes, this isn't a hippie movie, okay? Uh, so you have to take all that off. Is that okay with you? Now he's on the first name basis. I don't even know Marty that way. It's Mr. Scorsese. He's doing it for Marty. I was like, cool. He's going to shave for Marty. He goes, I don't realize you can't get you in it. You know, you got to take the beard off. You got to shave everything, cut the hair. Shave for Marty twice. What is that? Marty, I'll shave. So I said, okay, fine. He goes, ah, good boy, good boy. We take only the most dangerous damaged patients, ones no other hospital can manage. How I know Marty. That's cool. Radio, can you tell Marty that I'd love to work with him? Radio Man here, and I'm live with uh, Richie Gervis. I call you Gervis, but I guess it's something else. Well, you could call me um, Gervis, but you'd be saying the wrong name. Mm -hmm. My name's Ricky Gervais. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, I've just met Radio Man, and uh, he came up to me, and he looked at me, and he said, Mr. Gervais, he said, oh look, you've got Dracula's fangs. Now, I want you to look at Radio Man, okay? Give me that camera. Okay. Okay. He is having a go at the way I look. How would you like them apples? <laughs> I, I don't know how the celebrity defines friendship. For Radio Man, it's a, it's a real friendship. Off we go, yeah. How do you do this? How do you do that? No, you've got to turn it around. Turn the camera around. Turn the, the camera itself around. There you are, you oh, see. Oh, okay, there we go. There we are. Me and Tilda together. 
Oh. Yes, hello, Radio Man. I'm Sorry. such a lovely man, ain't I? I've grown to really know and appreciate him, and I think it's mutual. Over the years, you realize he does care, or else he wouldn't be doing what he does. Wow. Wow. You look good. You look good, too. I like that. Are you pointing at my cleavage? It doesn't exist. Hello, I'm Radio Man here, and I'm with uh, the big man, James Gandolfini, right, alias Tony Soprano. What uh, What are you doing uh, here? We're in New Jersey here on, on location in Kingsburg, wherever that is. Are you making a movie or something, or are you just hanging out on this lovely day? No, I'm making a movie. I'm making a movie. Okay. And uh, I just want you to know that Radio Man is my girlfriend, and I love him very much. Oh. <laughs> Goodbye. That's it. Out. I Thank love you, you babe. Thanks love again. You. Okay. You with your kids? Go ahead. I'll see you tomorrow, Jimmy. Wherever I go, it's Radio Man, you know? So that's why it's the best to be what I am. If I'm not, I won't be accepted. I won't be the same. Well, Radio Man, where's your bike? You know, they expect to see that. Radio man, where's your radio? You don't have your radio today? You know, stuff like that. You have to have that. That's my equipment, you know? The radio gives me strength, gives me power. Control, I guess you could say. With this, I feel superhuman. Without it, I feel weak. I'm not me. I'm not Radio Man without that radio, you know. I always wanted to be noticed as far back as I can remember. I grew up around this area in Brooklyn. My mother, father, my brother, me. That was the entire family. My brother, he's dead now. He was uh, 39 when he died, died of cancer. My mother died about 15 years ago. My father, he passed away around the same time. And uh, I'm the only living relative, <laughs> the only one left. My birth name was Craig Castaldo. I never liked the name, Craig. My mother gave me that name. I think, Craig, Craig, you know, that kind of shit. Craigie, don't forget to eat your greens. Craigie, eat your spinach. It just goes through you, I don't know, I, I don't like it. My mother wanted to become a model. That's what she wanted to do in life. She wanted to be a model, you know, a fashion model and an actress years ago. Maybe that's where it came from, the genes of me wanting to be an actor through my mom. It definitely wasn't through my father. Well, growing up, I was very close with my mother. Yeah. I was the spoiled kid. I was the one that would uh, just spoil all the time. See, my family used to like to sit at the house, in the house, and watch movies like John Wayne. My mother loved all that kind of stuff. And that's... Somehow it clicked in my head that um, I want to do this, you know. I want to do what they're doing. What I see on screen looks kind of easy. Fill your hand, you son of a bitch! There's more to this than I thought, Charlie. Yeah, like, uh, like Marlon Brando, you know, uh, on the waterfront. You know. Yippee-i-yay, -yay, motherfucker! My father was distant because he always used to work late at night, you know, he would overnights, he was a machinist, and uh, he'd uh, come home late, 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 you know, you know, four or five in the morning, half drunk, you know, because he'd go to the bar you know, after he was done work. My father used to like to hit. Wham, wham, wham. And uh, he used to throw bits at us. Me and my brother, <laughs> you know, like drill bits from the, from work. Is a drum at the, had to make holes in the wall and everything. That you son of a bitch, you gonna curse it again? I'll kill you. He was kind of sadistic in a way in those days, you know, because he figured that's the way you beat up, you know, you 
that's how you teach them a lesson. You know, when you get older, you learn from that, from those beatings and this and that, to be a man. Okay. I was always picked on when I was little by kids and this and that. They always ranked on this and that and called me honey wagon and all kinds of little names like that. That's the. Uh, I used to make jokes and fool around and to make them stay away, you know, the, the bullies to stay away from me by doing crazy things, you know, that kind of thing, you know. You're kidding this little candy store again. Ah! Yeah, there was a bit of loneliness here and there. When you actually leave there and go home and do whatever, it's kind of lonely. You're by yourself. I feel more respected and more understood on the movie sets than I do elsewhere. I love this business. I really do. I wouldn't want to do anything else. What's going to happen on Tuesday night? Oh, Tuesday night. What is happening Tuesday night? Oh, I have a big role on Tuesday night. That's what's happening, yes. Over at, uh, in Coney Island. It's a big job. I'm not going to say what it is, but uh, eventually you'll find out what it is. <laughs> you excited about it? Oh, yeah, very excited about it, yeah. People will understand it, and... Uh, We'll know where my character is coming from. I don't get it. I just don't understand what the attraction is to this guy. Every day there's like hundreds of girls that just gather around this dude. Turn the flash Guys, off. please, oh. I'm about to roll. Make sure your flash is off. We're going to ruin our shots. I've never seen any actor get this kind of attention through the years I've been in this business. You know, this guy doesn't strike me as nothing, you know? A skinny, white, fangless vampire, you know? What do they see in him? He's very anemic looking. I'll be able to get a better perspective of how this guy acts when I'm in the shot with him. You know, when we're down in his tombs, in the, in the jail, that's what he wanted, wants me to put me in there with him. I will see just how he's acting. I'll, I'll be able to be able to tell if this guy has got what it takes or he's just reading fucking lines, you know? Yeah. I'll know imme immediately. Mike, you got a key? Yeah. I just want to see this thing. Let's start. I've never seen a lightning one. I had to answer. Not bad. Yeah, the bike can fit in there, right? Yeah. Hey, uh, that's your room. Can you bring the bike? It's my room. Radio man to drunk. Are you gay? To Craig Schwartz drunk. Please sign said contract. Start paperwork and send back to the production office. This is my little home here. I have a place to sleep or rest or whatever until I'm ready to be go on set for call time. Here I got a little. Toilet underneath this thing is a shit house. <laughs> a bathroom and a little sink to wash up with. Ah. Yeah, what would you like? There's like, there's a chicken, a fish. No fish. Anything but that fish. Yes, Whatever you got. Hey, I know Bobby De Niro. Now, I'm friends with uh, everybody in the business, you know? I mean, I know all these people. Hi, Danny Aiello. I want I don't belong here. I'm innocent. Get me out of here. Stuff like that. Alan will direct you as he wants you to say it. Okay. But I would practice a few different ways. Mm -hmm. Just so you're prepared to. I'm prepared, yeah. Okay, you guys got it? I found something in here. Looks like it's moving. You know? I'm gonna make believe I'm British. <laughs> it's not exactly in the script, but uh, the director's gonna direct me on how to do it. I'm gonna call, uh, I'm gonna call, call Marty for me, huh? Call Marty, Marty Scorsese, Bobby De Niro, they know who I am. Hey, we're ready for you on set now, radio man. Uh, yeah. 
So if you don't mind, would you keep your complexes and your nihilistic bullshit to yourself? You nihilistic. I got it off the cereal box. Hawkins! Oh! Do you not even have yeah. the one yeah. night? Call your dad. Let you sue me. Hey, CO! Call! Call Bobby D! Call Marty! They know me! You dirty prick! Shut up, you old bastard. Up yours, you scumbag. Alright. Call Bobby D! They know me! They know me! Kiss my dick! Up yours, you miserable scumbag! Let me piss in your mouth! Thank you, Robert. This guy's a pretty good talent. Yeah. He's a good actor. Very nice guy. Stay behind the line, ladies. It's a good, proper part. I think it's a great part. Do I believe in myself? Yes, I do. I believe I can do almost anything right now. I would like to know. Do you want to tell me what you wanted from that cop guy? Nothing. It was just a messed up situation. I mean, yeah, I'll say it was freaking stupid. What it was. These guys, you know, they're just pussies. Uh, You're pussies. Pussies. Yeah. Yeah. pussies. That's great. That's good. Okay, Green Hornet, Lantern, <laughs> asshole. So I, I just want to come to visit. I might be looking to get get on it right away, unless you don't want to put me on. <laughs> I know Jack for years. Yeah, but I really can't give out anything. I'm sorry for you. It's okay. Don't worry. Okay. I you know I wait. All right, bye bye. Lori, I know you're on set, right? Yeah. Tell me, really where is set? I'm coming tomorrow. I don't know. Oh, I just can't. Oh fuck. What is it that you can? And no one can tell me this. What else? What's up with that? You can't give me an idea, a hint where you're at? I, I just want to come to visit. I want to see Jack. You know what? Call me. She won't tell me either. Ah, fuck. What else are you proud of that you've got? Oh, yeah. This is uh, from Adam Sandler. I got this on a set of Grown Ups in Boston. The Light Preserver. Isn't that cool? This shit keeps on dropping off. I need room, god damn it, I need room. I want to. I want to get out of here. I want to. I want to go to L.A. to see my friends, the actors in L.A., and go to the Oscars, maybe. Around the Oscar time, what's it like? Around the Oscar time, it's wild. A lot of people, a lot of energy, excitement, you know, and it's it's great, you know. And if they see me, they wave or somebody. They're like, hey, radio man, what are you doing here? Oh, you uh, you going uh, by coastal now, huh? East coast, west coast. <laughs> Well, I'm 38 waist and a 30 length. Now, as far as, uh, I don't know, my shoulders, I don't know, you know. Whatever, you know, and if, if it fits halfway in, I could get it hemmed somewhere. Appreciate it. Take care. At neither present time nor years unborn. And her courage. And her courage. I knew then. I knew then. As I know now. What I know she now. She would change my life. She would change my life. Forever. Forever. This is a little better. This is a little easy. This is a little, yeah. Well, I got four of them, so this you can tell me. This is good. You like it? Yeah, I like it. Well, let's see. Let's put it on this thing. Right. 
Right, now listen, I have tuxedo shirts. Tuxedo shirts are what, white usually? Yeah. yeah. Little floppy stuff. And... This is the regular collar. That's the wing collar. I give you one of each, okay? Okay. What do you think? I should wear the wing collar? No, don't, don't, don't <laughs> make that decision. No? You make that decision when you try it on and to see how it looks. And now, what do you do with this? You just put them on, right? There's no, no belt, no... No, not the belt. No, no. Roller belt, what do they call that thing? No, no, you don't want the cummerbund. Yeah. You don't use a cummerbund. 99% of the time, you don't use a vest. 99% of the time, it's very old fashioned. And my tuck shirts, there's two yeah. different kinds. There's the wing collar and the red collar. Even I'm in Hollywood, I figured I'd have to look the like old fashioned kind, you know, with the uh, with the bummer or whatever. Cummerbund. Cummerbund. No, you don't need a cummerbund. But it looks nice. No, it doesn't. It makes your people look short waisted and deformed. Really? Yes, it does. Okay. The easiest one is this clip one that'll go like that. Okay. It clips on there. Yeah. We talk to each other all the time, every couple of days, and he's like the most honest guy in the whole world, and, and a great guy. We've become very, very close friends. I think our relationship has grown so much over the last 10 or 12 years. He's probably one of my best friends. This land is your land. Hey, you have a good trip. going to go around with my radio, as you well know. See? Radio man. Here I am with a radio. And I'm the radio man. And I'm minus a bicycle out here. Uh, it, it seems like I can't get a get a bike without our, our credit card and uh, cash they won't accept. They say, oh, well, we have to be covered because uh, we, uh, we don't know if you're going to steal a bike or run off with it or this and that. So uh, they don't know who I am from Adam, and I don't know who they are, obviously. I don't understand the logic in it at all. But uh, we're shopping around and seeing if I can get a bike somewhere. And meanwhile, I'm minus uh, any wheels at the moment, so. We got it. We got the bike right here. I got the bike. Finally got it. Yes, sir. I'm happy now. Here's the money. Radio man in, where are we, in Santa Monica? What is this, uh, Venice Beach? Is that what this is? Yeah. <laughs> you want something nice and easy? This is perfect. This is it. Do or did it, did it, dumb, did it, do. I got chocolate milk, orange juice, all for the 99 cent store here in LA. Oh, you gay in LA. Look at this. Salad. Egg salad, right? 99 cents. Everything is 99 cents. It's amazing. Hey, 99 cent only stores. Show you the bag. Isn't that wonderful. Hmm? And in that bag, I found for 99 cents not one, but four items. At Christmas stuff, of course. 
it's marked down because Christmas is over, but still, cheap. A Santa Claus's <laughs> stocking, right? Santa Claus teeth with bubble gum. And this, maracas, <laughs> Santa Claus inside the chimney. What's this? Fruit gelatin, a whole bowl of it, 99 cents. Cheese, peach slices, big cans, 99 cents. Unbelievable. Screwdriver, oh, 99 cents. And I did it all at this. Radio man on his cycle, cycling all around LA. You miserable movie whores, woo! One autograph, they shove them in his face and this and that. Well, that's what they are, these collectors, you know? <laughs> Hi, Ann. Hi, Ann. It's Radio Man. How are you, sweetheart? That's everything. You're eating good? You know, it's a tough one this year, right? The competition, but... So far, this trip has been kind of rough. Yeah. I'd like that sea out there. <laughs> the people here, like I said, are not that uh, receptive. They're not that friendly. They're very much of, uh, like snakes, like vipers. They claw at you, this and that, and uh, crunch you down for information. And they don't even care if you're here or not, basically. They're just all in for themselves. They're very selfish human beings, many of them. Not saying everybody, but uh, I'm talking about people in general, like the collectors and uh, the uh, the autograph people. Uh, they're all talking about me, yeah. Oh, Radio Man, he he owns property. They make up all these stories. These different people. I don't know who they are, but that and then people are gullible enough to believe it. You know, but I'm not. I mean, I don't have millions of dollars, and I don't live in, like off the fat of the land. I work. I struggle for everything I do. You know. As an actor, as everything I've ever done, I've never got it easy, you know? I've always had to break my balls to, to make it, excuse my expression, to get where I'm going. Hollywood and Highlands in Los Angeles, California, the Academy of Motion Scrap, Picture yeah. Arts and Sciences invites you to the 81st Annual Academy Awards on ABC, brought to you by Diet Coke. Join Diet Coke in partnership with the Heart Truth. Well, I gotta put my pants on. Put on the top hat, do my thing. No one will ever know, it's radio man. Ah, look at me, eh? I can't believe it. Could I have this stuff? Amazing. the other way, yeah. This is 83, so you're ready to go up. Do you have any 
invitation? Are you on the guest list? No, I'm not. Unfortunately, not this year. I'm going to make a few calls and see how they're sneaking in. You know, it's got to be a way. Hey, what's up, Carl? Hey, don't tell me anything. I want to watch it later. Oh, oh, you don't have invitations, and I'm not going to let you spill. Sometimes it's a tidal wave of fun, other times it's a monsoon of misery. It's a piece of cake out there compared to this. New York is a piece of cake. It's a whole cake. How are you? Just coming back from the Oscars with my. Uh, Soda and my dinner for the night is with Carl's Jr.'s <laughs> an Oscar favorite. Oh, not again. Every fucking night like this. God damn it. What's wrong with this fucking thing? See, I was cursed. It's the only way it works. Good evening and welcome to the Academy Awards. This really is the biggest movie event of the year. I can't believe Sean Penn wants I'm going to bed. Why is it important to you that celebrities see you out here in L.A.? Hmm. Well, so, you know, I'm, I'm in both coasts, so they see me at both ends. I mean, we're the east and the west coast. And hey, Radio Man, you actually traveled all the way out here, you know? It makes it look like uh, I really care, you know? And I do, you know? There's paparazzi's everywhere. They have nothing else better to do. This is a life to lead? I mean, what kind of life is this? So they don't care about these stars. They just want some dirt on them. I'm here because I know these people. I've worked with them before. These movie stars on movies that I've done in the city. And uh, the funny thing is, I run into Cher. Into Cher today. Just me and her together. You know, over there somewhere, and I'm waiting at Cicione's, that we used to be the old Mortons. And she comes by, she goes, I go, I'll go fuck yourself. I turn around, it's Cher. I go, what is this? You know? And she goes, Radio Man, what are you doing here? As a matter of fact, <laughs> I didn't expect you to see you here. I've never seen you outside of New York. Oh, my God, but you never come to New York much, right? Well, I've been working, so I, have, well, I don't get there. What did you think of the Oscars yesterday? Do you think Slumdog was was that good that it got Can through? I tell you something? I yeah. didn't see it. And yeah. the reason I didn't see it was because I didn't see it right in the beginning, no, and people I never were talking seen it about either. it so much that I yeah. thought if I see it now, no matter what I it was is, pissed because I wanted Mickey to get that award. I really you did, know? too. Yeah. I, I just thought he was... Sean Penn, that little great. mousy fuck fuck it. No. <laughs> he was great in it. He was great really? in it. You saw that? I think, oh, I think it yeah, no, I, saw, I, I never comment on things I haven't seen. I saw the tabloids and, you know, about you. And what was that? I got three. Think she has three years to live. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here. Bye. Baby, you'll live forever. Okay, see you soon. Take care. Thanks, Jeff.
<laughs> you see, that's her. Yeah, you can tell by the voice. That was her. That was Cher. Not an imitator, not some female impersonator. That was Cher. And I had a talk with it. And that was what you just heard, that little soundboard. Ain't that cool, folks, huh? Cher here. So I, have, I well, don't get there. What did you think of the Oscars yesterday? Unbelievable. <laughs> If I could be famous, famous, you mean? And make the big money? No, I don't think I, 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 I want that. I just like what I'm doing now. To get really uh, recognizable and totally famous and be like the actors are now, uh, then I'd be just like them. You know, I'd be in, 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 in their shoes, and uh, I don't think I'd be accepted the same way. <laughs> There's some black in it somewhere. How many did you kill? Oh, many, many, many. We have to wait and find them. All right, sir. Good to see you. Thank you. Lord, right All right, sir. Did Jimmy get you those pictures yet? Not yet. Are they done yet? Yeah, they're done. They're somewhere in there. We'll be back in a minute. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Steve is on SNL tonight. He's hosting it. You know that? That would be good. Plus, Alec Baldwin, he's in Thirty Rock. You ever watch Thirty Rock? Yeah. When I'm dressed in a tuxedo at a wedding, right? And I see this big bowl of shrimp. He doesn't pander, you know? He makes the connection, which I love. And it can be a funny connection, it can be an intimate connection, it can be, it can be all of the above, you know? He, he is the everyman, he's the renaissance man. There's an, obviously a great eccentricity there, but I think one also, also always feels a great intelligence. Everybody may not dig it, they may not understand it, and they may not be comfortable. Radio, how are you? Yes, good to see you, Radio Man. But would I want him to become someone else? No. He's just always been such an energy and such a force, and since that first moment, I don't know, I just felt this affection towards him, because he's just got the sweetest eyes. If you think of Paris Hilton as one thing, then you think of Radio Man, he's built it from the ground up. He's built it literally from the street level up. He's got it. He completely understands the, the community and the, the feeling of companionship that cinema can provide. And you are never alone if you're plugged into that. Look at the broom closet I have in my head here. I often wonder that if, if you did a movie in New York on location and it didn't turn up, you'd kind of miss it. You know, you, you'd, you'd wonder if maybe you'd done something <laughs> wrong. He really puts himself out there. You know, it's, it's a way of life for him us to work in like we all do. He works hard. Okay, that's a wrap. He's happy, you know? He's happy with his home life. He's happy with his cockroaches and his bags. He's happy with his bicycle, with his dirty sweater. And he's happy that when he gets on the set, he's home. As I say, if this ever happens to anybody else and they feel that they can do the same thing, well, go ahead, follow your dream and do it. You know, follow what you have to do. You let your life, you just go straight forward with it and, and do it. No matter how hard or matter how difficult, people may try to discourage you in every way. Ah, you can't do that. Ah, you stink. That's not, don't believe it. Just go with yourself. Do it. And who knows? It just might happen.
But yeah, radio's been on um, on 30 Rock, gosh, like five or six times. Hey, I want to feed in my mouth. He's evolved into a character by the name of Moonbest. Give me your fingernails. No. It was a beautiful ceremony. Mazel tov. Would you turn that down, please? Mazel tov.